Good afternoon, hello. My name is Daniel. This is the Triathlon Dan YouTube channel. I'm back home, Liz. Woo. Have you missed me? Missed you like crazy. Yeah, I bet you have. <laughs> now, uh, today... Quiet. Yeah, I bet it has. Right, today is the my first session back at Liz and I's Run Club. I've missed so many sessions since I've been away at Liz, haven't yeah. I? How many have I missed? My fitness is just like yeah. gone through the roof. How many have I missed? I welcomed you back to Fat Fighters today. <laughs> You didn't get a run done last week, You've did you? You've not missed any sessions because in England it's been a constant rainstorm the whole time you've been away. Yeah. Well, we're gonna, as soon as we get to the top of this hill, we're gonna start running. And then we're gonna pick up this conversation on a walking section later into the run because we've got something to talk about this, haven't we? What have we got to talk about? Something about what something happened on this street. Oh, last I'm week. not talking about that. <laughs> yes, we are. <laughs> let's get off the street quickly, though. <laughs> right, let's get running. <laughs> right, come on. But I'm not running yet. I'm <laughs> walking. So I get to that car, then I'll start. No, you started the lamppost. You started the lamppost last time. Who's in charge of this club? Yeah. Well, so this is actually the first like proper exercise I've done in a week, I think. I did do half an hour on a gym bike and a three minute swim. <laughs> but I was away after we'd finished riding. So I've got a lot of work to do, but this is a time of year now, you know, starting to train for the winter. So I'm not in any way panicking. The only thing I have changed is I was going to race across country this weekend, but I'm not just because I haven't run for like three weeks. I don't want to go straight into like a five mile full gas mud fest. It just won't be sensible. So I'm going to get a couple of weeks running in, but then I'm going to hit the cross countries, I think. Just said to Liz, we were running back on the last hill. And it's loads steeper than a hill that we walk up on the way out. And I was like, the only reason you walk this, you run this, sorry, the only reason you walk on the way out, because you're stubborn, because you always walk this bit, and you're like, every time I walk, it's out of stubbornness. I don't need to walk. <laughs> <laughs> I'm being sassy. I know you are. Right. Come on, those sassy pants. Tell us what dramas you got up to last week when I wasn't here. Um. And just remember, it's, it's better safe than sorry. <laughs> when Liz is telling this story. Just yeah. remember that. Well, I was already a bit like on edge because I was on my own in the house, so I was already not sleeping great, light sleeping, etc. Well, it my fault. Anyway, Friday night I went to bed with a really bad headache. I didn't take any tablets or anything, I don't really like taking tablets, I thought I'll sleep it off. 3 a.m. I woke up, the headache was so bad, I had to get tablets. 5 a.m. I woke up because the um, smoke alarms were going off in the house upstairs. So I got up, obviously it shot me, woke me up, checked all around, couldn't see any sign of a fire or anything. But oh, I'll have a quick glance outside and I saw what I thought was this gets so smoke much better. Right. coming out the, um, the neighbour across the, the way from us out of one of their windows at the back at the top. Anyway, so you always have the office window a bit cracked, don't you? So it's like, it is closed, but it is like got a gap, a small gap in it for air. And I thought, oh my goodness, you know, smoke must be coming through, setting off my smoke alarm. That's why it's intermittent, it's just bits coming through. So five o'clock in the morning, it woke me up. So I just rang 999. No, I'm going to use to keep up there. Why? You ran outside? No, I rang 999 oh, first. first. Oh, okay, right, yeah. I rang 999 yeah. and said, um, reported the house fire. Which is the right thing to do if you think there's a fire, yeah. always do that, yeah. Obviously it was pitch black, you know, I couldn't really see properly anyway. Yeah. Smoke alarm still going off and then um, put my dressing gown on, went running outside, I went banging on their front door and I mean absolutely banging, shouting at the top of my voice like, you need to get out, there's a fire upstairs and banging like, hello. There's quite a lot of houses around there where we live as going well. Going crazy, the whole cul-de-sac was probably looking at me. Um, Anyway, then they said, they went and checked and everything and said, no, no, it must be the boiler. And I was like, are you sure, are you sure? Like, I just, I just didn't believe them. I was convinced there was this fire upstairs. They're like, yeah, 100%, it must be the boiler. I said, right, oh, I'm really sorry. I'll ring 999 again and get them to stand down. I'll ring 999 back and they're like, no, they're still gonna, they're still gonna have to come because of you've reported the house fire. And I said, look, I can assure you, it was a complete mistake. I said, I think, my smoke alarm battery must need replacing obviously i won't quite with it because i've just it woke me up and then i saw all this steam without which what i thought looked like a smoke 
and um, anyway they said no you're gonna have to look out for the fire brigade coming just pop out and they'll, they'll get a message to stand down but they will still come anyway just pop out when they arrive and speak to them next thing not one but two fire engines come blue flashing lights it's literally lighting up the whole street then the, the firemen get out and i'm out there in my dressing gown like <laughs> saying stand down stand down <laughs> I was so, so embarrassed. I was apologising to the neighbours, but he was like, oh, thanks for getting me up. I'd not, I'm at work and I'd not set an alarm. So he was quite grateful that I'd actually got him up at five o'clock in the morning. But I was convinced that this um, boiler kicking out all the steam and that was actually a fire in the house. So yeah, basically, if in doubt, ring 999. <laughs> So I'm, I'm now the um, fire warden of the cul-de-sac. Mm. If anyone's got any concerns or anything they want me to ask me, I can uh, answer any questions. And I'm moving house <laughs> through the shade. And I am all. walking around with my head down so I don't have to speak to anyone for the foreseeable. It's one way to get to know the neighbours, isn't it? Yeah. I'll be known as that guy with a psycho missus Yeah, now, well, I did feel like a bit of a psycho afterwards. No, I think that's the right thing to do. I think you should perhaps learn what a smoke alarm low battery beep is. <laughs> it wasn't that though, it was a full on smoke alarm going off. Was it? it? Wasn't just a low battery beat. Hmm. It was even going off while I was on the 999 call uh, and the woman could hear it behind me and everything. Oh, uh, okay. All right. So it was like a genuine okay. smoke alarm thing. Well, good to you had fun this while I was away. I still had the headache that following morning, <laughs> just so you know. <laughs> So on that note, we're going to end today's video there. We've done, what, just over half an hour of walking and jogging. Run Club's back active again, isn't it? We have, are we talking about the race it rented? Oh, no, that could be another video. <laughs> it was actually your idea. I know. All right, should I we cover it? I thought it'd make me run more. Should we cover it in another video when we're ready to talk about some sort of training plan? Yeah. This Run Club doesn't train towards races to oh, race and okay. compete, but we're just trained towards, okay. oh yeah, pro ginger ones. Uh, something to complete. That's what we're doing, isn't it? Yeah, that's like and subscribe thanks bye bye <laughs> that sounds a bit like smoke on <laughs> you're the best wingman that i know <laughs>